Hey guys, Kelly Fab here, and today I'm going to do reviews on four different palettes that I have been working on for the last month of using, and I really wanted to start this series because I realized how many eyeshadow palettes I have and how many times I really use them. I rotate through my palettes so much that sometimes I don't really get a full view on if I really like that palette or not. So the other day I was talking with Stacy on her Instagram. I will link that down below as per usual and she wants to do this as well. So we are both going to pick out between two and four palettes every two weeks or week for her. She does them more consistently than I will, but that's okay. But we are going to review these palettes and see which ones we really like, see why we like them, and what we can use them with, basically. So the palettes that I chose, I chose them because they're ones either from Project Pans that I had been using or ones from last year that I used a ton. And I really wanted to see if they were ones that I could declutter or if I wanted to keep in my collection. So let's get started on those four palettes. I will tell you the four and then I'll go in the order of that and I will show you guys close-up swatches and everything like that so you guys can really get a good sense of them. And yeah, so let me know how I could make this video better by commenting down below if you want me to do full eye looks on these palettes. I'm not gonna do them on these ones, but I will do them in the future if that's what you guys want. But honestly, doing tutorials is just not my thing. So that's why I didn't really want to do them, but I will so show you swatches and tell you a bunch about these shadows. And yeah, so let's get right on into it. So the four eyeshadow palettes that I have for this first palette review. I'm not really sure what I'm going to call this yet, this series. If you guys have any clever names for it, let me know. But they are the Too Faced Beauty Wishes and Sweet Kisses palette. This was in my project pan from last year and they are only three eyeshadow shades and a bronzer shade and a highlighter or I guess this is technically a bronzer shade. I don't use it but anyways this is the first one and then we have the Real Her two shadow palette in do your squats and it is a very neutral brown toned palette and i will tell you about that one and then i have the urban decay xx vice limited reloaded palette and this was from december of 2015 and i really really love these shadows it's a super colorful palette and then finally I have my Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette. I told you guys that I would have a review on this soon and here it is. But here is the palette. Sorry, my ring light is kind of blowing it out there. But I will show you close-ups of all of these palettes with the swatches of each of them. But let's just get started. You guys have actually seen these palettes in my background. I actually have been keeping them in here in this glass container. So I will put the new ones that I choose for the next you know, check in back in there so you guys can have kind of a sense of which ones I will be using for the month. I want to start with this one from 2014. It is the Too Faced Beauty Wishes and Sweet Kisses and it says that's what pretty girls are made of. This was the holiday collection for that year. Um, I actually got this second hand from a girlfriend on Mercari and I have bought from her many times. She's bought from me. We kind of just like trade makeup. Honestly, we should just send each other our makeup because buying is silly at that point but I have three shades in here and this is white chocolate creme brulee and hot hot chocolate hot chocolate I don't know hot chocolate and then we have the sun bunny bronzer and the chocolate soleil bronzer and there was a lip gloss in here which I did not get with the packaging but this is a tin closable packaging so I did bring this traveling with me quite a few times and I bring this in the car just to do my makeup really quick and it is really really sturdy packaging. I could technically depot these three shadows on the top but honestly I don't want to. <laughs> I just, I don't want to have them in a Z palette and forget what they're called and I just, I don't want to depop them. I like them. So this cream shade here I use all over the lid to set down my primer or just to kind of give myself a base to go off of. This brown shade in hot chocolate here is the one that I will do in the outer third or outer half of my eye and it is a shimmery brown color but it does have more of a satin finish to it and it is super super blendable because I tend to put either too much or too little so typically I'll put 
too much on this eye because I'm left-handed and then I'll put too little on my right eye and I'll have to like make them even <laughs> and this shade is super super blendable and it easily evens out to either add more or take some away it really is a nice nice shade I really love this dark shade I don't have any browns that are this kind of shade with this type of finish and I'm going to be really sad when I use this completely up but I do have a significant dip in there from last year. I'm surprised I haven't hit pan yet but I have heard that Too Faced shadows are much deeper in the pan than other shadows so I'm not surprised. And then this lighter shade in Creme Brulee is the one that I will put on the inner third or inner half of my eye and I just put it on with like a blending brush and it really just looks so natural and brightening on my eyes. It also has the same finish as the darker one. It's like a slightly shimmery but more of a satin finish and it blends so well. Like the two just mix and like these three colors together is a complete eye look for me. I typically wear this at work because it is just so simple and easy and quick and like I said, I can bring this to work and it just, it doesn't break. I dro I've dropped this so many times on hard concrete floor and nothing has happened to it. Also, I will use this Chocolate Soleil Bronzer as my transition shade. So I'll lay this one down first and then I'll put this one in my crease and kind of just blow it out of my, like in the crease of my eye. And then I'll put the dark shade in and then I'll go with the light shade. And this literally is an entire look for me. So I will say though, once I'm done with these two shades, typically actually the brown shade, when I'm done with the dark brown shade, because I have tons of gold shades like this, but I don't have any browns like this, that. Um, when I'm done with that one, I will be decluttering this palette. I don't plan on completely using it up. This Sun Bunny bronzer, no, nope, it's the Snow Bunny bronzer, sorry. This Snow Bunny bronzer is terrible. Like, do you guys have that bronzer and do you like it? It's not a bronzer at all. It's like a, it like wants to be a highlighter, but it wants to be a bronzer topper. I don't know. I hate that shade so much. I've tried to use it. It just looks terrible. Terrible. Like whenever I've tried to use it, here it is here. I know I will show you other close-up swatches, but it just looks so bad because it really wants to be a highlighter. But then it's like a bronzer topper because it's darker. And then I tried to just use like the white shade and the pink shade in here and it just doesn't look good. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm not using that. I'm not going to even waste my time on it. But this one I have been using with a fluffy crease brush. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to use this Chocolate Soleil bronzer. As a regular bronzer it is way too warm toned for me and it just it doesn't look good on my skin it just looks way too orange on me but these three shades up here are fantastic and then using this as the transition seriously I freaking love this palette like I'm so glad I ended up getting it and I've used it so much. I just, I really, really do enjoy this palette. And I, I mean, I would say I would recommend it to you guys, but it's an old palette. It's from holiday of 2014. So honestly, I don't think you can get this anywhere unless you get it secondhand somewhere. Yeah, I plan on using this palette until this brown shade is completely used up and then I will be decluttering this because I have a million cream shades, I have a million gold shades like this, and I have a million transition shades that I like way more than this one. I just use this one for the convenience factor of the fact that it's just in there. I know it's a bronzer, but I use it as a transition. But I love this palette. I would definitely recommend it. If you have it in your collection, whip it back out and try to do that eye look with just this palette. It works so well. I really love that brown color. I have to try to find a dupe for that before I completely use it up because I love that shade so much. So if you guys know of a dupe for the hot, hot chocolate or if you know if Too Faced sells this shade on its own, let me know because I'd really be interested in picking that single shadow up. I really, really love that brown shade. So definitely keeping this one. Then I have my Real Her 2 shadow palette in Do Your Squats. This is in my 7 Deadly Sins project pan. It is a vegan and cruelty free product so I do really really like that. But here are the shades here. I mean it's like a super neutral brown kind of a boring palette but for me because I wear these shades so often it is really really nice. <laughs> so 
I have actually been able to use every single shade in here. There are a few cranberry shades, like this one here is more of the berry toned, along with this one down here. This one's awesome, and it's more of a berry toned shade, and I'll typically wear these two together because they are more of that berry toned color. Also this terrific shade is like a brown and it's got like these weird gold shimmers in there. But it's so weird because when you put it on your eyes, the gold shimmers just like float away. And then it's just a really nice brown tone. So I don't even know why they put those gold shimmers in there. Maybe just to make the shadow look different. Honestly, I think it was a useless point to put those gold shimmers in there because like I said, they just like float away. They just completely disintegrate or just I don't know, loosen up from the powder and just, I don't know, they just aren't there. Which is fine because I don't like that shade with the gold in it. I like it as itself without those gold flecks in there. And I just, I don't know, it's such a weird concept that they even bothered to put those in there. But whatever. This dark brown shade here is on the very, very cool side of the brown tones. And I love this color to deepen up my outer V. It looks so good whenever I use that shade. Also, these shimmer colors, um, Bodacious, Dazzling, and Limitless here look so good all over the lid. So typically I will put them on with a brush first to kind of put down the main base of the color and then I'll go in with my finger and just tap it on to make it more intense or you can just use a wet brush if you spray it with like I use my wet n wild fixing spray or setting spray whatever it's called. I'll use my wet n wild spray to use these wet and it looks so good when they're wet. And then Driven is just a regular all over cream shade. I mean, once again, another palette with a regular cream shade just to set down as your base. I will typically use that one up by my eyebrow and just as my base color. But yeah, I really, really have been enjoying this palette. I used this when I went to Florida. I brought this with me and I was so happy that I did because I had every transition shade and every corner shade that I needed in this palette. And then I even had some lid shades, which I typically ended up using my, top, my Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But I would actually recommend this palette if you're looking for a really good travel-friendly neutral palette. I would recommend this one. It is really, really good. And it's so compact. Like it's literally the size of my hand. It's such a small palette, but you get nine good size shadows in here. And I haven't, I mean, I've made quite a few little dips in here, but it really doesn't look like I've used it that much because you don't need much on your brush. They are so pigmented. If you pick up too much on your brush, you're gonna regret it because it's just gonna be too much. They are super blendable. They are super soft on like to the feel and they're super soft on your skin and blending with each other and blending with other palettes, they work super, super well. So this one I did get in a boxy charm and I am really happy that I did because I really do enjoy it. And I think this one is coming in one of the Fab Fit Fun boxes. So if you get that box, this one is a really nice palette. I definitely suggest trying it out. So the next palette that I have was from my 8 by Easter project pan and is the Urban Decay 2 or 20XX Vice Reloaded palette. And here it is here. And as you guys know, I used the shade Mildew and the shade Goldmine as two of my shades for that project pan. But honestly, there are so many good shades in here. Like, Forcing myself to use just those two tones, I typically ended up picking up this palette and being like, well, what else can I use? So this ended up being my favorite shade of the entire palette. It's called Suspend, and it is the gray tone shade here. It is the best transition color for a very cool toned look. So I have been gearing myself way more towards cool tone looks lately. And this gray tone suspend is perfect for that. Um, I have been loving these two purples. I would do this dark purple in the outer V and the light purple in the inner V. And I don't even like purple looks and they looked so good on me. I really enjoyed this pink shade in hot pants. That was a really fun shade. I used this red shade, which 
The day that I wore it, I was looking for something a little bit different, which I ended up going in with this ColourPop Semi Precious palette, and I ended up using the red shade from that, and that was more of the shade that I was looking for that day, just because of, you know, what look I was going for. But that shade is super, like, it's like a muted red color, but it's like a deeper muted red. I really did like that shade. Um, this green mildew shade and acid rain were so beautiful. When I used them together, I used the mildew shade all over my lid and then acid rain I used underneath my um, on my lower lash line and it looked so good. Then Midnight Cowboy is in this palette as well and you guys all know that shade from Urban Decay. I actually use that as an inner corner highlight and that one looked super nice. This twice baked color, I believe this is in one of the naked palettes. This twice baked, I'm not sure which one it is. I could look it up. Um, but that one was super nice for darkening my outer V as well. And I think I wore this, I did. I wore this one day all over the lid for a super dark smoky look and it looked so nice. This one here, Anonymous, is just a regular cream shade. Once again, another regular cream shade in a palette. And then Laced is very similar to it. It's just a little bit darker than Anonymous. And Lace was just another cream shade. If you have a very light skin tone, I would say Lace would be a good transition shade for you. But for me, it just kind of looked like my skin tone. Um, what else? Moonflower and Smog were so beautiful all over the lid. Um, Misdemeanor was so pretty. It's like this blue-green color here and it has a satin finish. So nice. Shallow is like a gray toned silvery lid shade. I have worn a shade like this before and it wasn't my favorite so I didn't end up trying that one. I did use the shade Oil Slick right here and it's a black with silver glitters in there and I wore that all over the lid one day for a smoky look and it looked fantastic. And then Road Stripe I didn't end up using. Um, UVB is like a purpley blue down here. I didn't end up using that one. Um, yeah, I think that's the whole palette. I really, honestly, I've used more shades out of this palette than I thought I would. And just, like, it's just so inspiring, this palette to me. Like, just looking at all the shades, I feel like I can see so many different looks. Even if I just go with the neutral tones, which there are very few neutral tones in here. It's a very colorful palette. But even if I just went with the neutral tones and then did a bright color underneath the eye, this was such an exciting palette for me. I really, really did enjoy it. And just like thinking about it right now makes me so happy. I know in my eyeshadow declutter, I was going to declutter this and then I decided against it. And I am so happy I did because I love this. I know this is an older palette from 2015. This was actually made in December of 2015. I think I got it at the early part of um, 2016 so I've only had this for about two years and I'm so happy I finally got into using it I really really do enjoy this palette and I plan on keeping it around if you guys can pick this up I know you probably can't except for um, like secondhand type of places I leave my Macari site linked down below so you guys can always go into Macari that way but it is a fantastic palette I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a colorful palette I did have to use a lot of the shades with my fingers or with a um, setting spray so that I could foil them to make them a lot brighter. But I like the fact that they can look more muted as the color as well. So if I didn't want that bright green color, I could just use it on its own and it had more of a muted effect and I really did like that. So. I would definitely recommend this palette. Honestly, I kind of wish I had more of these Vice palettes just to try out more of their shade tones and colors and stuff like that. But I really love this one. And honestly, like, I love this suspend color. <laughs> this is the best gray tone transition I have ever found. Let me know if you guys know if Urban Decay has that as a single because I would love to pick that up once it is gone out of here. I know they had that. I know they had the singles on the 21 Days of Beauty sale, but I'm not sure if I could even find it. I didn't really look that day either, but let me know if they sell that shade in a single. If you guys know, I would love to pick that up. Or if you have it, let me know if it's the same, if you have this palette too, if it's the same in the single, because I know sometimes they change the formulas. 
but yeah I would definitely recommend these vice palettes they are fantastic I really do enjoy this one and I'm so happy I kept it in my collection now last but definitely not least is the palette you guys are probably looking for because I've been mentioning it a ton on my channel it is the Too Faced chocolate gold palette I do have a close-up to show you guys before I even touched it I was so disciplined and I decided to film a close-up for you guys before I ended up touching it I felt so good that I ended up doing that because it looks a little bit messier now but this is basically a completely shimmer palette except for four matte colors so once again as you guys all know there's this freaking huge cream shade why do we need a ginormous cream shade in every single freaking palette I can buy single cream shades I mean it's nice that I could just use this palette but I don't need to set my makeup every time I do makeup. You know, I don't need that aspect of it. And if I do, guess what? I have a million other palettes. As you guys saw, it was the cream shade was in every other palette that I had. And it's in this one too. Only in this one is ginormous. Why? Why can't you just make a smaller one and give me an extra color? That's, that's my only tiff I have about these chocolate bar palettes is because the bigger shades are ones that I don't typically like. Like, if this bigger shade was one of these brown bronzy tones or even this purple or even this green I would be so much happier but it's the yellow like I don't need a huge gold toned sparkly yellow I can find that in a million different palettes I'm kind of over the yellow eye lately too so that is my one gripe I will have and I will say about this palette is are the two bigger panned shades are not shades that I would have chosen for this palette but this palette is freaking amazing the quality of these shimmer shades are amazing once again I will show you swatches of all of these colors but you have your four transition tones here in the bottom of the palette I do appreciate that they did do this decadent color which is a black and matte black which you can definitely use a very light hand with and deepen up the corner just slightly which I have done many times this shade in so bougie and cocoa truffle i use those in my transition so i use so bougie first to just lay down a just a typical transition color for me and then i use cocoa truffle to darken that transition if i'm going for a deeper toned look my favorite shades in this palette though were holla for adala and it's like this it's like a brown toned green it's like a very muted down green with like a brown undertone in it they're all like metallic shimmery colors but this one has more of a satin finish and the shimmers in there are not chunky at all and then I really did like old money it's like this coppery shade I have these shades all over the place but I just I love that type of shade and then I really like classy and sassy and it is this more it's more of like a rose gold type of shimmer shade right here um, the one shade that I will say is very very chunky in this palette is love and cocoa it's this deeper toned shimmer shade it was a little bit more chunky money bags was this very bright green it's more of like a hunter green I would say and I really did enjoy this color I'm getting a lot more into greens lately but this green tone here was so nice I really did enjoy that one I only used that once or twice I used it on my lower lid and then I used it on my upper lid um, on two separate occasions and it looked really really good I loved this pink shade typically I don't wear colors like this pink and this purple in here but I did wear them both and this pink shade is called new money and it is so gorgeous like it just brightened my eyes I actually wore it in a couple of my videos if I can remember which videos they are I will post them down below but I wore that and I just really enjoyed that eye look it really just brightened my eyes and then this living lavish purple color was really nice I actually wore this in the outer third of my eye with a different shade on my lid from the Urban Decay Vice Reloaded palette and it looked so good together I really enjoyed that and then this dripping diamonds this is the only color that I did not use in this palette because it is a silvery blue color and I typically 
these shades just don't look that good on me with my skin tone and the way I like to do my eyes and stuff but I will probably end up using that shade eventually and then this famous shade is just like a neutral brown toned shimmer I liked that one a lot as you can see I have quite a bit of usage in that one maybe you can't see but yeah that one I used quite a bit there and then Rich Girl, I used quite a bit. Rich Girl reminded me of a ColourPop color in the shade. Uh, starts with an F. I'll have to look it up. But Rich Girl definitely... Oh, man, I just dug my finger in there. Um, Rich Girl definitely reminded me of a ColourPop shade that I use all the time. If I can remember it, I will put it on the screen right here. And then you have your Classy and Sassy, which was that rose gold color. I loved that one. I used that one a ton as well. And then, like I said, all of these matte shades. I actually do appreciate the fact that they put these matte shades in here because I could make a whole look out of this one palette because I had those neutral tone matte shades. Did I need them in here? No, I didn't. I could have gone with an entire palette of shimmers and glitters and stuff like that and I could have definitely gone without this gold shade which I didn't even use once because I don't like this type of shade anymore. I'm kind of sick of it. You know, what can you say? I think that this palette is definitely worth the money if you guys like a shimmery shade on your lid or underneath your lid or if you just like shimmer colors in general, I do think the packaging is really nice. It's like the regular standard chocolate bar packaging, but it has like this dripping gold on the top. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of like the Willy Wonka chocolate bars that had like the gold ticket on the inside, you know? I'm just saying. Okay. But anyways, I really, really I enjoyed this shade, this palette so much. The lasting power of these shimmer shades was so long lasting. I rub my eyes all the time because my eyes get very e easily irritated. And the lasting power of this palette was incredibly long. I would typically end up applying these with my finger though. I tried to apply them many times with different brushes, even setting spray and wet brushes and tons of different ways. But the way that I found these work the best is definitely with your finger. The matte shades, obviously I used a regular brush for a crease brush or a fluffy brush or whatever kind of brush I was using. But the shimmer shades, every single one of them worked out way better with my finger. I could get a lot more pigmentation and I could get him to go exactly where I wanted because when I used a brush, it didn't end up going exactly where I wanted on my lid. I was very picky with this palette because yes. I knew I wanted to be because I wasn't sure if I was going to take it back or not. I'm definitely going to be keeping this palette. I love it. I love the color range and the color tones. Any kind of look I'm going for, I can reach into this palette and get a shimmer shade for my lid. So... I really did enjoy this palette and if you're looking into this, especially because the Sephora VIB sale is coming up soon, it's starting on March 20th, or no, I'm sorry, April 20th. If you guys are looking into this at all and you really like these shades, I would suggest go to Sephora, swatch these shades and see if they're shades that you'll actually use and I definitely think this is a palette that is worth it. I paid full price for this palette and I'm so happy that I ended up picking it up. I think this palette is fantastic. I just... I love this one. I really do think it was definitely worth the money and I could not be happier, honestly, with this palette. I bring it all the time with me when I'm going somewhere. I brought it to Florida with me to... <clears throat> to complement my Do Your Squats palette. And these two together was just like the perfect thing because I had all my colors that I needed in here and then I had all my neutrals that I needed in here. So I used these interchangeably for my whole trip and my eye looks were always fantastic in my opinion. I mean, who knows what everybody else was thinking, but I really liked my eye looks those days. I pretty much did my makeup every single day when I was in Florida and I really did enjoy this and I've been using it ever since, honestly. When I go for a shimmer shade, I will look in here and see if there's any shade that I want and I, fit, I usually find one that I want. But if not, then I'm like, oh, well, you know, I use it the next day. But I have been loving using this. I 
have used it a ton. Like I said, I apply it with my fingers. They are super blendable. I have applied way too much before and I was just easily able to buff it out and make it look good. And I would recommend this to you guys if you guys are looking for a really, really good shimmer palette this is the one. I mean, I hope this isn't limited edition because this is a really, really good metallic palette. And yeah, I recommend it, obviously. What can I say? So those were the four palettes that I had for this first palette review. Like I said, if you guys have any clever names, leave me links down below. But as of right now, I'm going to call this the four palette review series. And yeah, so if Stacy ends up doing this with me, we kind of, like I said, we kind of talked about it. But if she ends up doing it, I am going to link her Instagram either way down below. She's got a great Instagram feed of beauty products and stuff like that. But yeah, so make sure you guys stick around if you want to see the palettes that I pick out for next month. I am going to list them down below because I haven't quite decided what I want to do. I like to add in a neutral palette, maybe an older palette, a newer palette, stuff like that, a colorful palette. I like to have a good mix of palettes to use for the time frame that I am going to be using them and reviewing them. And yeah, so let me know if I could do anything to make this series better or if I could change anything. Like I said, I will, you know, make sure I do all the swatches and everything, but I'm not really into tutorials. So I really don't want to do an eye look because my eye looks changed all the time. I don't do the same eye look ex except for with this palette. I did the exact same eye look every time I wore this palette and I will continue to do this eye that eye look with this palette. But yeah, so let me know if there's anything that you guys would like me to add or take away. I will always leave prices for the products on the screen as I talk about them and yeah, so let me know what you guys think and I hope you guys enjoyed this review of these four palettes and I hope this was helpful helpful to you guys in some way, shape, or form. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day or night wherever you are and I will see you in the next one. Bye!